the current is flowing this way. Well, I think I'll maybe draw it a little bit wavy so it looks like it's a current. Yeah. And the guy is rowing upstream. And as he's passing under the bridge, his hat falls in the water and starts floating downstream with the river. That's a pretty small hat. There it is. That's a hat. It's floating downstream. Meantime, the guy is still rowing. Well, you don't need a sail on a rowboat, do you? The guy is still rowing upstream. And 20 minutes later, he realizes that he's dropped his hat. He turns around to chase his hat, which is still floating. And by the time he catches up with his hat, he's two miles downstream. And then we're asked, how fast is the river flowing? Now, take note of the fact the only numerical fact we've stated here is 20 minutes corresponding to when he notices his hat is missing. And the two miles corresponding to the distance from the bridge where he catches up with his hat. And from these facts, we're asked to figure out how fast the current is flowing. What a lot of people wanted to do is uh, write a system of equations in uh, several unknowns. There's parameters, well, the, I guess primarily the parameter that people want to solve for is the speed of the man in the boat as an intermediate step, because if you knew how fast the boat was going, everything would flow in a straightforward manner. And people set up the equations, and find those equations are hard to solve. And if you're very clever about it, you can write the equations in a form where you do get a solution. And the answer is, the river's flowing three miles an hour. And you can get it, but it's a little hard. It's pretty hard. The way to do it the easy way is to consider your frame of reference to be with respect to the surface of the water rather than to the shoreline. Now let me explain what we mean by that. The river could be very wide. And if you're just looking down at the water beside you, you don't necessarily know that there's any current flowing at all. You don't know that there's any current flowing until you look at the river bank and see that the trees are moving. The trees are moving. Even if your boat is standing still, the trees are still moving. Then you realize there's a current. But if you don't look at the riverbank, you don't really know there's a current. So if you dropped your hat in still water and paddled for 20 minutes and then realized your hat was missing and you turned around and went after your hat, then you get your hat 20 minutes later. You spent 20 minutes going away from it. You turn around and it take 20 minutes to get back to it. And look, it doesn't make any difference that the river is flowing. It's still 20 minutes. It's 20 minutes to get from here to where your hat is, and it's 20 minutes to catch up to your hat. Because as far as your hat and your boat is concerned, the river is still. The way I explained it to one guy is I said, well, imagine that there's lily pads floating on the water. And this guy happened to know more about lily pads than me, and he was aware that lily pads, although the pad is floating, it's actually anchored to the bottom by the vine or something like that. So so that the lily pads aren't moving with the water, but I meant that they should be moving with the water and that you're winding your way through the lily pads and it's the same lily pads coming and going. It's the same molecules of water if you want to look at it that way. Anyhow, it's 20 minutes coming, it's 20 minutes going. 
So it's 40 minutes. It's 40 minutes from the time the hat drops to the time he picks it up. The hat covered two miles in 40 minutes. The river's going at three miles an hour. And that's the problem. Everyone's nodding their head in the studio, wisely. Sadder, but wiser man here beside me, nodding his head. Uh, all right. I promised we would keep up the uh, problems, but I'm going to save next week's problem for towards the end of the show because uh, I wanted to uh, set it up a little. I've